Are you swimming in a sea of data and wondering how it's tamed into meaningful insights? Welcome to the nerve center of data management, ETL and ELT processes. This is where raw streams of social networks and online shopping giants transform into structured, actionable knowledge. You'll delve into the art and science of data ingestion. Whether it's the deliberate craft of ETL, extracting and refining before loading, or the dynamic world of ELT, loading and then reshaping. Your journey through this module will empower you to unlock the secrets of data, turning chaos into clarity. Get ready to master data strategies that will revolutionize your understanding of how to use information. In this video, we'll talk about that how do we set up the ingestion pipeline in any company? So when we talk about the role of the data scientist, we have already discussed one of the primary role of a data scientist is to collect data. How do we collect data? In order to collect data, we have to set up the pipelines so that we are able to read data from different kind of sources. The sources could be a flat file, the source could be a database, the source could be a streaming system or the source could be as simple as like a IoT device. Now, when we are designing this pipeline, we have to ensure that every bit of data or this continuous flow of data is continuously flowing to a layer of storage. Now, this whole ingestion pipeline has been formalized and has been given a term called as ETL, which stands for extract, transform and load. This whole ETL thing is not new. We have been using this in companies for many, many years now. Let's try to understand this three phases of ETL, which stands for extract, transform and load. Extract means that we should be able to read data from different kind of sources. As already mentioned, the source could be a flat file. It could be a database. It could be a distributed system or any continuous stream of data that is coming in. Once the data is extracted, the next thing is that many of the times that the data that we are collecting is not good enough. We might have to filter some data out of it. Or sometimes we have to remove some PII data which stands for the personal IDFAVL information. What it means, say for example, if Facebook is trying to collect the user click information, it's absolute mandatory that all the personal details of the user like password or any other personal details should definitely be filtered out. It should not be stored into layer which will be used for the analytics, right? So all these processing, dumping the unwanted data or dumping the data which is not correct or data which is very secure and should not be stored. That's what we do in the layer of transformation. And once the data has been normalized, once the data has been transformed and we have removed everything that is not supposed to go, final layer comes the loading, the loading into the data storage layer. Most of the time when we have an ETL pipeline, the layer where we actually dump the data is called as data warehouse. We'll be talking about the data warehouse in details in the coming videos. So that's what the ETL is. ETL stands for extract, transform and load. However, as I already mentioned, we have been using ETL for many, many years now. But if we look at the today's industry trend, apart from the ETL, there's another standard data ingestion pipeline, which is coming into the practice. And that's typically is called as ELT pipeline. Now the acronym remains the same which is ELT it's just that L and T has been reversed so what happens in the ETL is that the extract process remains as it is so first of all thing that we need to do is that enable or ensure that we are able to read from the source of truth but now here instead of transforming we are directly loading it to our data storage solutions Without thinking of if the data is right, if the data has some PI information, if the data is invalid, we don't do much thought there. We simply go and dump the data. 
and finally when the data is in our data storage layer we run some analytics on the top of it we run some kind of jobs to fix that so in the ELT you extract load and then finally transform so that's something else or some another way of ingesting your data into your data storage layer that companies have been practicing of late so right now we have two options either we can go with ETL and ELT if you've made it this far in the video give us a like a share subscribe hit the bell icon tell us what you want to learn next in the comments and then wait or skip the wait and become a data scientist in just 12 months with the executive PG program in data science from IIIT Bangalore powered by Upgrad in collaboration with experts from Meta, Mintra and LinkedIn. Over 20,000 working professionals from over 65 batches have already done this course. Now back to the video. Now let's try to understand that how these two techniques of ingesting data to your data storage layer differs. So at one go, we have something called as ETL and another we have something called as ELT. So the basic difference is that in the ETL, before you load the data, you do the processing. Whereas in the ELT, before you do the processing, you first of all go and load it. What is the advantage? What are the scenarios where you would like to prefer ELT than the ETL? Since in the ELT, you don't have to process before you write. So in the situations where it's a write intensive application, where you have too much of load, you're seeing too much of traffic, right? And the rate of ingestion of data is very high. If you start processing it, it will add further delay. So to make things fast, to ensure that your write pipeline is not struck, it's not a bottleneck, people are trying to first of all go and store the data and then do processing in the offline fashion. The other scenarios where we'll go and prefer ETL is that when my data is structured. So if we know that the data that we are getting as a stream from the source has fixed set of attributes, it's not changing all the time. I'm getting similar set of data. ETL in those cases makes a lot of sense because in that case processing becomes simple. It is not that much time taking. On the other hand, if every time you have a different set of data, different schema, Processing itself will take a lot of time which becomes a bottleneck. So when you have unstructured data, you have a dynamic schema that is coming up, ELT is the preferred way of ingesting your data. Thirdly, if you want to make sure that all your private details as already mentioned, you want to filter that out before you go and store as a historical data in your analytical pipelines, ETL is the one that we need to prefer. But in the case, if you don't care for that uh, PI data or if you feel that PI data will not be present, we can go ahead with the ELT instead. In terms of the practice in the market, ELT is there for many, many years now, whereas ETL is comparatively pretty new. So people have just started using ETL because of the data outburst. Now, if I talk about the examples of the ETL and the ELT, there are multiple solutions. Say, for example, uh, conventionally, the Oracle has been used for the ETL solutions. Whereas if I talk about the ELT, all these cloud solutions like Azure Data Lakes could be one of the solutions where we literally don't have a limit to the amount of data that could be stored. So we can just extract the data and blindly go and store that in the data lakes. Our exploration of ETL and ELT has shown us the transformative power of data. In a world where data is ever-changing, aage ki socho with Upgrad and stay ahead in the art and science of data management.